All righty, we are going to graph y equals 2 sine theta. First thing I want to do is find my midline amplitude and period. So my midline, since I added nothing, my midline is simply going to be 0. My amplitude is the number in front, so my amplitude is a 2. And my period is not 3, but it's 2 pi divided by 3. So those are my midline amplitude and period in order to graph this function. Now, since the midline is 0, that means our middle of it is on the x-axis. All right? My period is 2 pi over 3, so that's going to be important for helping me figure out how wide this graph is. And I'm going to be going up and down 2 each time. Now, it's a sine graph. Now, real quick, a sine graph... I hope you understand a sine graph. If this is your midline, do you guys understand a sine graph looks like that? So if it's a sine graph, a sine graph will always start at zero and then end at the end of the period. Since the period is 2 pi, isn't it going to end over here at the end? And can I call that 2 pi over 3? I said that wrong earlier in the sense of the period is 2 pi over 3. So doesn't it start at zero? and end at the end of the period. I'm going to call that 2 pi over 3. Nice thing is we get to label it however we want. So start at 0, end at 2 pi over 3, because I start here and end here. Now, if I start here and end here, when do I hit the midline again? Well, don't you hit exactly in the middle? So exactly in the middle would be right there. So this wouldn't this be exactly in the middle, which would be pi over 3, halfway. So halfway, we're going to hit again. Because look right here, you start here, you end there, and halfway, you hit again. Now we know the graph is going to go up and back down, and it says the amplitude is 2. So isn't it halfway between these, aren't we going to go up 2? Halfway between these, aren't we going to go down 2? So just so it looks a little bit better, I'm going to go by 1's and 2. Negative 1, negative 2, just so it looks a little bit better. So halfway between, right here, aren't we going between these two dots, aren't we going to go up 2? And then halfway between these two dots, aren't we going to go down 2? And do you see five dots? Whenever we graph trick functions, we have five good dots. So now we make our nice little trick function. Looks like a roller coaster. And we have graphed one cycle of this function. Nice thing is we got to label it however we wanted. Could I graph this over on this side? Could I graph the other side of this over here? Yeah, but usually when we graph, we're just graphing one cycle. You don't have to graph this, but I'm just going to kind of describe it to you. If I went up, when I was right here, if I went up to 2, won't this one go over to here and down to 2? Won't there be a dot right there? Wouldn't that kind of be the other side of the graph, kind of like that? You went over 3, up to the 2, over 3, down. Now, you don't have to draw that part. I just drew it so that you can see the other side. But normally, we want just one good cycle. So this one right here, we're going to graph cosine. So my midline is going to be, there's nothing added, so it's, again, y equals 0. Your amplitude is the front number. So your amplitude's right there, so it's a 1 half. What does the negative mean? The negative means there's going to be a flip at some point. So the graph is going to be upside down. And then your period is going to be 2 pi divided by that. So if I take 2 pi and I divide by pi over 4, that would be equal to 2 pi over 1 times 4 over pi. Pi's cancel, leave me 8. So my period is 8. That's a little bit trickier. Now, if I have a cosine graph, it's upside down. So an upside down cosine graph, 
will look like what? It looks like it starts on the bottom, comes up, and back down. Midline's right there. That's kind of a sketch of what a cosine upside down graph looks like. So, let's first mark our period. If our period is 8, how do we fit 8 right here? Well, I'm going to go by 1s. I'm just going to go by 1s. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Because if we went bigger than that, we probably won't fit it. Our midline is the x-axis. Our amplitude is a half. So if my amplitude's a half, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this negative one half and this negative one. I'm going to call this one half and this one I'm, so I can fit it better. I'm just going to try to fill the space. So I'm kind of changing my increments. And then, okay, if it's an upside down cosine graph, aren't we going to start below the midline? So how far below the midline do we start? Isn't it one half? So we are going to start one half below the midline. And aren't we also going to end at the same point? For cosine, if you start, you end at the same spot. So we start here, so we're also going to end there at a period of 8. Now, halfway between these two dots isn't at the max. Won't this dot be halfway between? So what's halfway between here? Isn't it four? And how high should it be? Well, aren't we going to go the amplitude up to there? So won't it be there, halfway between? Now, my next two dots are right here and here. What you have to understand is those two dots are going to hit the midline, and they're equal distance between these two. So what's halfway in the middle of 0 to 4? Right there. So isn't that where it's going to hit? It's going to hit halfway between these two. You're going to have a dot right there. Then halfway between 4 and 8 is right here. So you're going to have a dot right there. So now, let's graph it. So we're going to graph it. So I'm going to start right here. I go up, hit that, turn back around, and there we go. That right there is one cycle of a cosine graph. Now, if I wanted to get some other points, I could continue this. For instance, to get another dot, won't this dot go down and back up right there? So if I wanted to, I could kind of go like to here to there. And then you could also notice, oh, it's also going to go up to here to there. If you want extra dots, you could kind of see that. And on the back side, you could kind of see it would go up to here. And then it would be going to there. Now, do I have to do these dotted parts? No, we're graphing one cycle. But that gives you the better feel for how the other sides do look. But most of the time, we're just looking for that one specific cycle. Alrighty, we're going to graph this function right here. First thing we want, midline amplitude period. My midline is right there. My amplitude is the number in front, which is nothing, which actually is a 1. There's really a 1 right there. So my amplitude is 1. And my period is always 2 pi divided by that number. So 2 pi divided by pi, those cancel, leaves you 2. So from that, I'm now going to graph. Now, when I graph, the first thing you actually want to do when there's a midline is to graph the midline. Now, because I know how the amplitude and period are, I'm going to graph this is negative 1, this is negative 2, this is 1, this is 2. So my midline is right there <coughs> at negative 1. So my midline, it's kind of hard to see, is right there in green at negative 1. Now, since I have a sine graph, what you got to realize is a sine graph starts here, goes up and back up, kind of like that. 
So I know my sine graph is going to start right there. So this dot is going to end at 2 away. Now, I'm going to end it all the way over here. So I know my graph is going to end all the way at the end, so I'm just going to call that 2. All the way at the end is 2. So halfway across is going to be 1. So that's 1 right there. So, But for sine, doesn't sine start right there, halfway through hits again, and at the end hits again on the midline? So for sine, aren't we going to start here, end here, and hit halfway through? Okay. Now, my, my amplitude is 1. So halfway between these two red dots, which is right here, aren't we going to go up 1? Because it's positive sine. So halfway between, we're going to go up 1. And halfway between these, aren't we going to go down 1? And you now have a sine graph. If I wanted to, I could graph this side, which if you think about it, won't it go down and go like right to there? So it's going to be like right there. If you wanted the other side, it'll look something like that. But you don't really have to. The red part here is your singular cycle of a graph of that function. We're now going to graph this one. So my midline is always that, so it's y equals 2. My amplitude is a number in front, which would that be a negative 1, but my amplitude is a positive 1 with a flip, so we know it's going to be flipped over. And my period, there's really a 1 sitting right there. So what is 2 pi divided by 1? It's 2 pi. All right, first step in graphing is to think about, okay, my middle is going to be 2 and my amplitude is 1. We've got to look at those to think how we're going to label this. So I'm going to go by 1s. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to put my midline at 2 right here. So I put my midline at 2, okay. Um, my amplitude is going to be 1. It's a cosine graph that's been flipped. So a flipped cosine graph, actually, if this is your midline, starts low goes up and comes back down. So that's what we're going to be looking for, something like that. So if that's the case, I'm starting at the low point, one down. So norm, this is where sine starts. Cosine is going to be starting right there. So cosine will start right there. And then the ending, we'll just call it right here. Let's go all the way to the end. It's going to end at the end here, and I'll call that 2 pi. Nice thing I get to choose my increments. And halfway through, right there, is going to be pi. So for a cosine graph, we start here, we end here. Halfway through, aren't you going to go to the highest point? So at pi, which is right here, aren't we going to go to the highest point, amplitude 1? So we are right there. Again, you start down here, you end down there. Halfway through, you go to there. And then halfway between those, you hit the midline. So again, you're going to now hit the midline. Halfway between these two values, you're going to hit the midline right there. Boom. And halfway between these two dots, you're going to hit the midline again. Boom. Let's graph that. It goes up like that and down. And there's your trig function. If I want to sketch the other side, it have a dot like right there, and it kind of be going back up. But if you want the back side, it kind of look like that because see the pattern? And it kind of keep the pattern going. But this right here is an upside-down cosine graph. Midline 2, amplitude 1, period 2 pi.